Good evening, I'm Lena Hassanel. Welcome to BizWorld. The government is currently refining the draft amendments to three acts as it moves towards ratifying the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, to ensure that they are in line with Malaysia's obligations and commitments under the RCEP agreement. Bagi melengkapkan proses rektifikasi tersebut, tiga akta perlu dipindah iaitu Akta Paten 1983, Akta Hak Cipta 1987 dan Akta Cap Dagangan 2019 yang terletak di bawah bidang kuasa Kementerian Perdagangan Dalam Negeri dan Hal Ehwal Pengguna KPDNHEP. RCEP was signed by 15 countries, 10 ASEAN member states and 5 ASEAN dialogue partners, including Australia, China and South Korea, on November 15th last year. Datuk Lim added that the RCEP agreement will only come into force after at least 6 ASEAN member states and 3 ASEAN dialogue partners have ratified it. So far, China, Japan and Singapore are among the countries that have ratified it and expect it to be effective from January next year. The Malaysian Investment Development Authority, MIDA, via its one-stop centre for business travellers, has facilitated 1,120 companies and 2,822 short-term business travellers, with a total investment value of 121.37 billion ringgit. Its deputy CEO, Siva Suryamurthy Sunandra Raja, said the centre had eased the entry application process and the movement of business travellers in Malaysia. Center for Business Travelers is this mechanism allows for short-term business travelers to enter Malaysia and to do business without quarantine. Siva Suryamurthy said the center is a game changer for new investors to conduct business activities to expand their operations. He added Maida would continue to welcome investors to do business in Malaysia amid the pandemic. And Malaysia remains steady on the path to economic recovery and growth while balancing between public health and livelihoods. Okay, the OSC committee has comments at Generating Malaysia's economy and promoting the nation on the international stage. Introducing Malaysia as a long-term stay destination. Malaysia My Second Home MM2H program. Easing up on its new rules, what does it take to attract high-quality participants? MM2H Consultants Association President Anthony Liu speaks to Money Matters this Saturday at 5pm only on TV Tiga. Bursa Malaysia's near-term outlook remains positive due to the stronger pickup in market interest and reopening economic sectors. Inter-Pacific Security said Malaysian equities remained on the ascent, bucking the regional weakness on sustained rotational place and continuing interest from foreign institutions. Heavy buying was seen in steel, construction and consumer discretionary stocks that was buoyed by the reopening theme. The positive trend was also apparent in the broader market, albeit the total gainers narrowed against the losing stocks due to increased profit-taking. Inter-Pacific sees some mild hesitation on bouts of profit-taking, but the weakness is likely to be short-lived, as there is still strong buying interest that could help lift the key index to 01590 level. The rotational buying is also spreading among the broader market shares, and this trend looks to continue as retail players continuing their return to the market. The UMW Group's automotive sales rose to more than 22,000 units in September, compared with 9,000 units in August as operations gradually normalized. The firm said both UMW Toyota Motor and Perodua continued to ramp up production to hasten delivery of outstanding orders. UMW Toyota sales more than tripled to 8,033 units in September, from the 2,524 units in August. Meanwhile, Perdua registered sales of more than 14,000 units in September, from around 6,000 units in August. The group expects the sales momentum to peak in the last quarter of the year, supported by the year-end promotions and the sales tax exemption. That's all the time we have for BizWorld. I'm Lena Hassanel. Thank you for watching and keep tuning in to TV Tiga.